Okay, so Seagate, you, you're launching a solution, or you have launched a solution recently, which I think you described as a new inflection point in the storage industry. So I, I guess before we go into it, it'd be just good to understand how significant you think the launch of the Mosaic 3 Plus platform is. It'd be good to understand that. Yeah, hey, Philip, thank you for having me. It's great to uh, have the opportunity to speak with you. Yes, we're very, very excited. And uh, Mosaic 3, uh, you know, we're not, it's really not an, uh, an overstatement when we say that it's an inflection point for the industry. So as you know, the disk drive uh, technology has been around for more than four decades, right? And along the way, there's been incremental uh, improvements uh, improvement in terms of performance and uh, improvement in terms of capacity increases and all that. Now, uh, changes in recording technology is uh, really an inflection point because it gives you a magnitude of, uh, you know, uh, multiple increases uh, in aerial density. This drive technology is all about storage density, uh, aerial density because it's about how much data you can actually provide to our customers, right? So if you actually increase the aerial density, so you can actually provide customers with more capacity for them to store the data. Now, if you think about it, in the last 10 years, the growth of aerial density has been hovering perhaps at about 20, about 10% plus or minus. With Mosaic 3, it actually doubles that. We're able to grow aerial density at more than 20%, which really helps to uh, address the growing and exploding demand uh, in storage. Now, in addition to that, right, there's not just about this increase in storage demand that people are concerned with. There's also about cost. I mean, yeah, sure. Who wouldn't like to have more storage, but can you afford it, right? Secondly, right, it's about power and, and uh, you know, is there enough power out there to really drive all of the data centers that we need. And then thirdly, right, it's about sustainability as well, because uh, as we spend more and more of uh, the power to drive data centers, you know, we leave behind a long trail of, uh, you know, of, of carbon emission. And we have to really take the responsibility to address and figure out how we reduce that as well. So Mosaic 3 addresses all of these uh, uh, issues and challenges. Okay, it would be good to look under the covers a little bit and go through some of the, the components, the technologies in the, in the, and perhaps we can start with the, the fact that it uses heat assisted magnetic recording, if you can just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. So fundamentally, this draft technology, it's, uh, it's really about, uh, you know, magnetic particles, right? You know, when we write, you know, we alter the, uh, the orientation of the magnetic particles. Right. And then, uh, you know, and then we read, when we read, right, you know, we actually, it's a series of, uh, you know, ones and zeros, depending on how you orientate them. Now, as we increase capacity, think about it, Philip, as trying to pack more and more of these magnetic particles or grains, as we call them, closer and closer together. Right. Now, at some point, at some point, right, uh, you know, the, uh, the magnetic particles, you know, when they get too close together, they become unstable. So the challenge for us is how do we increase the coercivity of, uh, uh, you know, of the material, of the media, such that we can actually put them together without them, you know, becoming unstable. So that's really where our technology in uh, the media comes in that really allows us to, uh, you know, the, uh, the platinum alloy to allow us to really have the, the, uh, the magnetic grains closer together and therefore that's a secret sauce in a way of actually increasing aerial density packing more grains together now then you lead to another challenge how do you actually then write to it if uh, you know if it's really really super high coercivity media well that's where the heat comes in the laser in the rider comes into play so uh, the photonic uh, 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 rider would shoot a tiny laser beam into the grain, heating it up, therefore allowing us to be able to then alter the uh, the orientation of uh, the media. In a way, in other words, writing to it, right? Now then, then when you actually read it, right? Well, because the magnetic particles are so tiny and are so closely packed together, right? We have to have the technology to really make sure that 
A, right, you know, you're able to really very, very precisely read the spot where you're supposed to be reading and not have a lot of movement uh, around it. So all of this has to come together, right, you know, for hammer technology, which is what Mosaic 3 is all about, to work. And then controlling all of these things is also super critical. And that's why we have uh, in-house, we've developed a third generation of SOC to really manage and control the workings of all these three things that uh, I've just talked about. Okay, so um, as I understand it, so that's the super lattice platinum alloy media, yes. the plasmonic writer, and I think Gen 7 spintronic reader. And Correct. Then I think lastly, sorry, I'll just go through this, the 12 nanometer integrated controller. So. Um, of those, what if you're able to say what was the most challenging aspect? I mean, are these already existing technologies that you've refined, or how much is groundbreaking? Just thoughts as to what what were the specific challenges that you had to overcome with with each or any of those? They're they're all extremely challenging, Philip, uh, and of course, right? You know, uh, I would say that, but I, I think that the, uh, the the newest introduction is really the uh, the, the photonic uh, technology in the rider. Uh, the plasmonic uh, writer because it's something which is new and never done before in the disk drive industry because uh, in the past, yes, sure, we can make the read-write heads more and more precise, which we have been doing. We're making the media, you know, with higher and higher cohesivity, right? We've been doing that as well. But putting laser on the head itself, right, attaching it to the head and really, you know, shooting the laser beam creates, you know, com different uh, challenges and different complexities which we have to address in the last, uh, you know, 10 plus years of uh, of uh, really addressing this. So I would say that, yeah, that itself is a, a phenomenal challenge. And in terms, of, I think at the, at the top, you, you sort of alluded to something, but it'd be good to understand the particular pain points this will address stroke the benefits obviously that you will be providing to customers compared to previous generations or, or what they might be using at the current time well um i i think you know just the, the usual challenges right i mean obviously power heat precision you know reliability you know all of those have to uh, to really be uh, be addressed to uh, you know for us to obviously you know when you actually introduce uh different temperature you know, to the media, right? You know, it creates different complexities uh, as well. So uh, it's it's hard to just say that, well, hey, these three things, uh, you know, are, are the most critical or whatever. I think, you know, it, every single component has to be lined up, right? You know, for this to really uh, be able to function and operate uh, precisely, which is why, right? You know, this is such a difficult technology. And again, you know, back to what I said earlier, why I regard it as uh, an inflection point in the industry, because, it truly is, uh, you know, uh, you know, quite a quite an incredible technology. And in terms of the sustainability angle, was that something? Was that a sort of important objective for you, or is it a sort of bonus, shall we say, to what you've done? Or was it part? You know, you, it was very much part of what you wanted to design. Bearing in mind, you know, the industry is under pressure to to reduce its carbon footprint. Yes, uh, I mean sustainability, you know, is is always there, and uh, you know, one of uh, you know the uh, the corporate initiatives uh, for us as well. And uh, obviously, you know, when we design a new technology or a new disk drive, uh, you know, we have that in mind uh, to see how we best, uh, you know, can produce a product, right, and invent and produce a product that really, you know, provides uh, uh, well. Well, first of all, reduce carbon emissions, right? And uh, that's through the uh, manufacturing process all the way through to the usage of the product itself. And in terms of the uh, the reaction that you've had so far, I guess it's early days, but I imagine you were potentially testing with some customers and now it's there. Just what sort of feedback have you had from, from customers to date? I would say that the feedback has been extremely encouraging, right? And uh, probably, you know, getting more encouraging by the day. Uh, the hammer technology, which is what Mosaic 3 is based on, is, is not new in terms of, uh, you know, what the technology that's being discussed. It's been around for more than 10 years and we've been working on it as well. Um, I think, you know, what is different now, you know, versus what it was before is that our customers and the market in general are now realizing that it is not a technology for tomorrow. It is tomorrow's technology that's here today and now. And that gives them a lot of excitement and they see the potential. 
they see the potential for them to really be able to address the issue of their scale. They see the potential of this being able to address the TCO issues and also helping the sustainability as well. So yeah, we've had a really, really very encouraging uh, response and feedback from our customers. And in terms of, um, apologies if this is a stupid question, but I'm just interested as to whether this development changes where the hard disk drives play compared to solid state. Does it move move anything at all or do they still serve fairly different um, applications and therefore don't meet in the middle or does this change things at all? Um, no, uh, basically uh, a Mosaic 3 drive acts and operates exactly like any other disk drive. So from an architecture, technology, positioning perspective, and whether it's up and down the stack, you know, no difference at all. But what it does do is because it offers uh, the advantages and, uh, and all that. So I think, you know, it just uh, gives a lot more flexibility uh, to the architects, right? You know, to really figure out like, you know, what they can actually do, uh, you know, with the storage uh, layers that they, they put together. And just more generally before we finish, I mean, everyone's talking about AI at the moment and, you know, depending on who you listen to, how, just how big the impact will be. I'm just interested as to what you think the impact might be on, on the storage industry. I mean, in the sense you're just storing more and more data, it doesn't have an impact or do you think it will require you to, uh, obviously you're launching something today, which is Im improving, if you like, the capacity. Um, but do you think you're going to be under pressure to have to, move up another level for AI, AI storage, if you like, or is it just more of the same? Oh, no, absolutely. Um, I think there's, there's uh, a couple of things that, uh, you know, as they say, right, there's, there's two truths in, uh, in, uh, uh, in life, right? There's death and taxes, right? And, uh, and I think, you know, bringing it to our world, there's one truth and that storage demand uh, will continue to grow, right? I think the question is, how much will it grow? And I think with AI, you know, it actually will accelerate. Now, we had a, a IDC has done, a, you know, lots of research uh, in this area. Uh, and IDC is just saying that, you know, data generation, right, is growing at a rate of close to 30% uh, a year, right? And, uh, and every four to five years, the amount of data that's generated doubles. Now, this was actually done pre-gen AI. Right, so now obviously they're going to be refreshing that, and uh, you know, and, and multiple studies have shown, uh, right, have pointed to the fact that uh, you know the, the growth in storage demand certainly you know would really increase as AI becomes you know more commonplace uh, you know, from an application perspective. Now, it's also important to also know that with the Gen AI today, the bulk of uh, you know the applications are in what we call structured data, which is mainly text. Uh, now, if you then look at all of the data in the world today, that portion of data is only 20% of all data. 80% of all data is actually unstructured videos, images, and all of that. Now, there's lots of uh, AI applications that are moving more towards image and video and all of that. So if you think about it, right, if you just extrapolate, well, okay. Um, you know, if we're using AI on structured data, which is 20% of all data, and then we're moving to have AI on unstructured data, where I would argue that the value of AI in unstructured data is immensely more than unstructured data, right? Then I think, you know, the, uh, the uh, I think you can, one can just imagine what it'll do to uh, the storage demand. Okay. I'm Bearing in mind what we talked about, and obviously we're talking about a significant launch, just be good to understand what's on um you know the seagate roadmap for for the rest of the year and, and maybe a bit further anything you can share with us as to what type of things you look at whether it's developing the company itself or any sort of technologies we we should be looking out for yeah we're uh we're very excited uh you know we we've uh, announced it uh we're working with customers on uh, you know major uh you know cloud service providers to get our product qualified and we're still on track to ship a million of these drives by middle of this year. So basically, we're talking about really going to scale uh, and ramp. Uh, our next challenge, uh, one is uh, to, uh, uh, to, to really broaden uh, the hammer of Mosaic 3 technology across all applications and not just uh, the cloud service providers as well. Uh, and that's uh, in a roadmap in the next uh, you know, one, two, three years as well. So 
uh, the first launch of uh, Mosaic 3 drives will be at the highest capacity drive, which is the 30 plus terabyte drive based on a three terabyte platform. The next phase of the launch is that, you know, uh, we can actually produce, uh, say, a 20 terabyte drive with fewer disks and hits, simply because the aerial density is a lot higher than what it was, right? And therefore, lowering cost, lowering power requirements and all of that. So that's uh, the next stage uh, in the roadmap. Uh, we're also having uh, our systems business where we have JBots, uh, where um, we've got an appliance where it's a self-healing uh, appliance where uh, you know the drives basically heal itself and uh, it's a technology, what we call Regen. So we've started shipping those products with uh, Mosaic 3 drives inside, you know, giving uh, additional capacity to our customers. So uh, 2024 will be an extremely uh, pivotal and challenging year for us, but also a very exciting one because it's the year where we will finally see the ramp uh, of volume production of our Mosaic 3 drives. Okay, it's been great to chat and, and some lovely insights as to what's going on at Seagate. So really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much, Philip.